to come along with us on our first experiment with setting up our Premier One fencing. We're hoping that this will be a good addition to our homestead here, perhaps to keep in chickens or goats in the future. And we really like the way that this has been promoted by other YouTubers, and we're hoping that this will be a good thing for our homestead too. Don't know if this is going to go well or if we're going to learn from bad experiences, but follow along with us and let's see how it goes. We were able to get this Premier One fencing off of an advertisement that we found on Craigslist. We've been wanting this for a good while, but just didn't have the opportunity to get it. We have our charger that came with the system facing the south. So that's the best direction. Hopefully it's been picking up a good charge and it's ready to go. <clears throat> this is a Premier One fencing system. They have wonderful products. And um, here's just a picture of the front of it. Uh, we're going to get this set up and see how it works. We're going to see how we manage the setup. The good thing about this is it's mobile and portable and adjustable, so right now we're hoping to do it in uh, 25 foot lengths to make a square. But if we wanted to, we could make a circle or we can work around a tree or whatever else that we need to do in the future. It's recording. Okay. Well, we got our fence laid out right here. We're going to start running this. This came with the, the posts when you order this. It comes with these already made onto it. This one has the double spike on it. This is actually an improvement over what they used to make, Premier One used to make. Um, and it helps keep it up a little bit more, makes it more sturdy. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at this corner right here. And we're just going to stick this in the ground. And hopefully it will go. We have... Um, pretty sandy soil here and it makes it real soft usually so that's just something to keep in mind I don't know what you know your soil is where you are it may be different um, but for us it goes in pretty easily so at this point what we need to do is we've got the first one in then Carol and I both are going to have to pick this up and sort of walk it that direction and keep sticking the posts in the ground so we're going to continue with this on them so that was not a problem we're trying to get it fairly tight and we'll have to keep working on this I suppose in the future for how well it goes it looks like Kevin's having a fun time just doing it by himself and so I'll go help him some more
right, we got it up, and uh, actually, uh, this is how I caught my wife. <laughs> got her inside of an electric fence that she can't get out of. Anyway, so we got this up, and this is sort of what it looks like. And we're going to plug it in, and hopefully it will have power. All right, we're at the end of the run where these two corners meet. Each of these has a little tab on the end. It has a metal piece on the end. One of these gets the, the power clip to it, and I'll show you that in a second. And the other one is just the end of the run, so it just usually will hang. If you wanted to add fencing to this, what you would do is the new fence you're going to add on to it, you would hook these two clips together, and that makes the connection for the next section of fence. But since we don't have that, this will just hang freely over here. And then this one will be hanging here also, but it'll be clipped with the power. All right, so our solar charger here has two clips. This is the positive, and there's a negative down there, that, the ground. And we've got it clipped to the metal spike that goes in the ground for the solar panel. That grounds it for us. And we've got it down here, down by the ground. It's just a clip also. And it just clips onto this metal right there. Like I said, we've got a, uh, a positive and a negative here, and then this red one here will get clipped onto the fence right here, and that's what charges the fence. And we've got it turned off right now, so I'm not getting shocked. Alright, so now I'm going to turn this on, and hopefully it's got power. This comes with a little tester. You get this with the fence when you buy it. And it tells you whether you've got charge going to your power to your fence or not. So let's see if it's got anything. And it looks like it does. It's reading 4.0. It says it's okay. Um, I believe in the instructions. It said that you have to have at least a, a 2.5 for it to have enough juice. Uh, of course, obviously, the higher it is, the more you know, you, power you have. This is, it just now it lit up about halfway. So it looks like it's probably got enough power that it would, uh, you know, it's charged or whatever. We would always need to make sure that we're not um, losing conductivity with the grass or something like that. So whenever right. we put it out, we'd put it here because this is a quite short grass area. Yeah. It wouldn't feed very many chickens for very long because there's hardly anything here to eat this time of year, end of February, but yeah. if we moved it out to a pasture area, they'd right. have a lot more to eat, but we would have to mow a path where this yeah. goes. Yeah. Yeah, you have to cut the tall grass because mm -hmm. if you've got tall grass touching it, it will take more power out of it yeah and if you've got something touching it to, to draw some of the power out then whenever an animal or something touches it they won't get enough of a jolt to make them get back yeah so that's what yeah you want to have as much juice going through it as you possibly can i wonder if it matters that we've got this not so tight on this first run here or that it's touching that rock if that's causing it a problem okay. so If that's taking any of the charge. Okay, still reading the same. All right. It, but it is definitely on the ground along here yeah. where the ground's not even. So we'll have to play with it and see right. what it takes. But the purpose of this out here on the homestead would be that we could keep chickens or goats in but also keep the predators out. Right. Because we don't want some uh, animal, coyote yeah. or something, that they're not yeah. going to be out in the daytime, but something like that, or even the neighbor's dogs, right. to come over here and make a meal out of our chickens, yeah. or to harass our goats or something like that. So yeah. that would be the purpose of this, keeping things out and keeping things in. We wanted to be sure that we had enough charge on the whole fence. We checked it from here where it starts, but I wanted to make sure that it did go all the way around and we had the same amount of charge over here that we had at the beginning, so I checked it 
with the tester and right here at the very end it's no it's the same so we do have the same amount of charge all the way around so that's a good thing we're pretty happy with how this went for the trial run I'm thinking that some of our subscribers or other people in YouTube land can give us suggestions for things that we could do better that would help us uh, in the future or things that lessons they've learned uh, the hard way and that'll save us some time and trouble in the future so please in the comments section give us some suggestions or ask us some questions about this product or how we found out about it something like that we're going to put the link to Premier One's website in the description and so then if you want to do more research you can find out about all their products this particular fence is sort of a multi-purpose fence, but they have some that are for larger animals, some that are for smaller animals. So, um, yeah, check out what they've got on their website. Thanks for watching our experimental run with our electric fence. One of the benefits of having this, and the reason we got it, is so that we can put our chickens or our goats or anything like that out in a different section on the homestead and let them clear land for us and fertilize it too. And maybe this would be something that would be beneficial and useful for you. Thanks for joining us here today at Hideaway Homestead. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, hit the subscribe button in the lower right hand corner, give us a thumbs up, and leave us comments. Also, if you have family, friends, or any acquaintances that may be interested in homesteading and learning about what we're doing here, send our information along to them also and have them to subscribe. Also, if you have the little bell next to the subscribe button, click that little bell and it will tell you whenever we have a new video out and you can sort of keep up with what we're doing. So thanks for joining us here on Highway Homestead and we'll see you next time. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it's got a bite to it. <laughs> A little bit.